Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we're going to continue looking at the first decade of Ursula K. Le Guin's writing. Her first novel was Rokanon's World in 1966. You can find that in my playlist for Le Guin. Today we're going to take a look at her second novel, Planet of Exile, by Ursula K. Le Guin, 1966. This is a very short novel, and it's part of an ace double with another good author, Thomas M. Dish, Mankind Under the Leash. If you're interested, I have a playlist for Thomas M. Dish, and I have looked at this novel as well. If you'd watched my review of Rokanon's World, you know I talked about the cover art for that first edition. I didn't really like it. This cover art is much better. The artist is Jerome Podwill. Le Guin's science fiction novels of her first decade are set in the Hainish cycle or Hainish universe. This is a universe that in the ancient past, humans populated many different stars. It is thought that their planet of origin was Hain, H-A-I-N. In the mists of time, they lost the ability to travel between planets and now are reestablishing themselves as a federation. Explorers, diplomats, and colonists are going and finding planets that were populated in the past. Le Guin's novels explore what happens when humans return to a planet that previously was populated by humans, but has been changed by evolution. In Planet of Exile, we have human colonists who've settled on the word of world. They've been cut off from the rest of the Hainish universe. They haven't heard anything for 600 years. So they are exiled on this planet. The indigenous inhabitants of Werrell are humanoid. There's a tribe of them close to the settlement of the humans, and they call themselves the Taverans. After 600 years, the human colony is slowly dying off. The planet Werrell itself is very interesting. It rotates around its star every 60 years. That means one year of seasons takes 60 years, Terran. One lifetime would most likely only see four to five seasons. In the opening of the novel, we are on the verge of winter, a winter that will last 15 years. It also tells of a migrating people from the north, the Gaul, who will pillage as they go through their communities. The human community has a coastal village that's surrounded by a stone wall. They have a bridge as well that goes out to a small island where they have a tower or perhaps a castle that is on that island. The leader at the time of this novel is Jacob Akat. The Taverans call the human colonists the Farborn. Le Guin describes the Farborn as having bluish black skin. The Taverans are fair skinned with blonde hair. I think you can see where Le Guin is going with this as this novel is written in the middle of the 60s. But it's not that simple. There's also an anthropological difference between these groups. You might think of the indigenous and Western cultures meeting. With the threat of the Gaul, can these two communities come together to defend themselves? To complicate things, the granddaughter of the leader of the Taveran becomes involved in a relationship with Jacob. This interracial relationship is a problem for both communities. And biologically, they can't have children. So we have a story of racial tensions complicated by this relationship. Can the two cultures come together as the Gaul migrate south? Will they be able to protect their communities and survive the beginning of winter? Le Guin's parents were anthropologists, and you can see their influence on her creation of the planets in the Hainish cycle. Each one is an exploration of a new cultural group. In Planet of Exile, we're looking at colonists who've been there for 600 years, separate but needing to live with the indigenous people. Can a bridge be created? I found the world building of the first third to half of this novel to be really slow, but understanding the geographical lay of the land and the relationships between the two communities is really important. It's the groundwork needed to understand the conflict ahead. The second half of the novel flew by, Le Guin's brilliance is not only her prose, it's in the building of cultures. 
She has an amazing sensitivity and ear for our differences and our commonalities. So far in my reading of Le Guin's novels, I would say she has this amazing ability to build cultural and racial bridges. And these bridges are integral to the working out of the plots. I didn't think this one was quite as strong as her debut novel, Rokanon's World, but it still was very good. I give it 7 out of 10. Next, I plan to read City of Illusions, her third novel. As I mentioned before, you can find all of my reviews in the playlist for author colon Le Guin, comma, Ursula K. Have you read Planet of Exile? What did you think? Until next time, keep reading.